welcome back to my channel. If you see my face for the first time, my name is Ashley. I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And today I have another guest with me. It's a very special guest and for a very special conversation. Today we're going to be talking about kids with special needs, whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, um, caregiver. But conversation is for anyone that is living or have to take care of a child with special needs. So my guest today is Jennifer. Jennifer, please introduce yourself. Hi. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm Jennifer, Jennifer Michael, and um, I work with children with special needs. Um, I've been working with kids with special needs for about 10 years now. Um, recently, I actually went to the field, like before it was just, you know, you work with children generally, but now I am like, a therapist working with children with special needs and it's been exciting. Yeah, yeah. So the first question I'd like to ask is what does it mean for you to say a child has special needs? Okay, when people hear a child has special needs, a lot of people seem to think that oh there's something wrong with the child. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the child. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the child. The thing is the child just learns differently yeah. from the neurotypical, that's the word we call it. Mm -hmm. Neurotypical children are the ones that learn like you know, regular normal learning process. Yes. But a special needs child needs that special attention, like it's called special needs. You need to pay special attention to the way that child learns. You just learn differently okay. from the regular children. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with a special needs child. Okay, okay. that's good. And um, what are the most common norms we have here in Nigeria? Okay. The most common ones, um, I would say, top on the list from what, where I've, you know, from my experience, yeah. I've seen a lot of ADHD, um, and that is um, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. It's most is the most common one I have seen, and a lot of people don't even know that these children have some, you know, some trait of ADHD. They just feel like, oh, that child is just disturbing me. The child is always but most times when you see these children, they have ADHD. And when they have attention um, deficit hyperactive disorder, like it's like it states, attention is a problem. You are talking to the child, the child cannot sit still. Not because the child does not want to sit still, but it's just a sensory thing inside. I can't sit still. So you're, you're screaming, the child is like, I don't understand it. It's not my fault. I just am not able to sit and listen. And you know, attention is not there. The child is hyperactive, touching, wanting to, you know, always wanting to feel his environment. Yeah. That's it. So you also have autism. We will not even go into that because it's a wide yeah. spectrum. Like yes. it goes from just mild cases to very severe cases. So on that spectrum, there's a lot of things. Okay. But the three major issues of autism is um, social skills, communication. Social and communication, that is the most, you know, prominent thing about um, autism. Mm -hmm. And then you have Down syndrome. That one, you just, it's mostly physical. So you just yes. see the child, you know that this child has Down syndrome. Yes. Those are the three major ones that I have. Okay. Okay. Um, another thing I'd like to know is, can you explain learning disorder? Okay. Learning disorder is when a child is not able to learn a skill and use it the way you know, effectively. Okay. You teach a child two plus two. You expect the child to know that two plus two is equal. Yeah. And when you add maybe two coins and two other coins, you get four. But the child is not able to get that concept and is not even able to use it effectively. Learning disorder can range from math, English, analysis. Anything. So the child with learning disorder is just um, it's just about looking for another way to teach the child. Okay. Learning disorder is just not being able to effectively use skills of um, concept thoughts. But can it be subject specific? Yeah. So yeah. a child can have learning disorder in math and not have it in Exactly. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. If that's where you have this. The dyslexia, the scapula, okay, the okay. So a child that is unable to read, for example, has dyslexia. Okay. But that does not mean the child will be affected in math. The okay. child might actually be very good in math. Okay. 
Okay. So, learning disorders can be very Okay, just to digress a little bit. So, a situation where a child is good with um, fine arts, mm -hmm. you know I've taught a few yeah. times. So, I had a child or a student that was good with um, fine yeah. art, anything creativity, it has to do with drawing, music, and all of that. But when it comes to subjects like English and maths, it was terrible. Like, even business studies that I taught, when it comes to the calculating part and all that, the child is the worst. So, that means that's a learning disorder. Yeah. The child, because the people assume it because he's unserious. Like, he just prefers to draw and all of that. He's not taking his academic serious, blah, blah, blah. So, you're saying that it's possible that a child has a learning disorder. Very possible that a child has a learning disorder. And a child can have multiple learning disorders, mm -hmm. not just one. Mm -hmm. So, a child can actually have dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they run into their own comfort zone. If I'm able to draw, and I have, it, it's just the way we have with music. When some people are sad, they just, you know, yeah. Play to the music that yeah. makes them happy. Yeah. The child knows that drawing is something he excels in. Mm -hmm. That's where his self confidence is boosted. So he just goes there and do it very well. Yeah. So for a child like that, if you can help the child with you know the learning of math, English, he needs it even in his fine art, yes. but the basics. Yeah. You can't push that child to get an account or a professor. Yeah. You yes. definitely yes. destroy the child. Of course. Um, something that I'd like to know is how do you differentiate between um, a learning disorder and a child that just does not want to learn, not enthusiastic about learning? Okay. Hmm. A child that is not enthusiastic about learning, it can be seen. It, it's just, you need to, that's why everybody needs to study the children they work with. Mm -hmm. You need to study your children individually. You need to teach them like that's the only person in your class or parents to so need to know your child. Don't lump them up and say, oh, they're my children, they're supposed to be smart or intelligent. Yes, you need to know your child. A, learning, a child with learning disorder will follow a pattern. Okay. You will see the, 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 the child being unable, even after trying so hard. You will see the child make efforts, but is not able to get it. That is a learning disorder. That's a challenge. The child is frustrated. The child is pain. And an enthusiastic child, he doesn't care. Yeah. You, will, you will know that he doesn't care. Yeah. You will just need no effort. You give the child something to do. The child will just sit down and look at you. Okay. You try and explain it and you know, give details. The child is just non challenge. Mm -hmm. I am not doing it. I am not doing it. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So it's, it's such a show. I'm learning so much already. So, um, next thing is, how do you motivate children with special needs? Hmm. Children with special needs. And it's, it's amazing what love can do. Mm -hmm. If a child knows that you love the child, despite everything, especially children with special needs that have encountered so much stigmatization, so much pain, so much frustration, if the child knows that you love them, despite all of those, the child will automatically be motivated just by you. Wow. So as a teacher, you have to love that child. When you love the child, I, I once had um, a testimony when a uh, child that used to have so much, you know, he gives his teacher so much problems. Then he came across this teacher and he would do anything for her. He would do anything. like. If she just if she just said, mm, Mrs. A is coming, he would do everything just to make her happy. This is a child that nobody has been able to get across to. Yeah. But if he knew that that teacher loved him, it was not just about the academic, you're doing well, so I love you because course, you're doing well. Just love the child because the person is a human being. And yeah. the, boy did, the boy did so well. So well with that teacher. Yeah. So it's it's just about loving those children, accepting them, and saying, I know that you, you have this challenge, you have this thing, but I am here and we can work with children. Parents, caregivers, teachers, everybody, environment, if we yes. love of those children, yes. there's no limit to what they can do. Yes, that's true. Um, okay, so what do you think parents with special need, or do you think parents with special need kids need orientation? Oh, they do. They do. Do. First, especially they do. In fact, abroad there's like um, 
a community therapy session for this parent, in as much as you're having therapy with your children. You have therapy. Because it's not easy. You can't you can't fight from it when you have you know, expectations and you already carry this child nine months, you're already thinking of how the child will walk, talk, how you will show the child and the child comes out. It will just it's almost like your world has ended. Like, what do I do with this child? Yes. You're like, what do I do? Because you, because of the way it is here, you feel the child will amount to nothing. Okay. So you're like, this one is just a waste. So they need a lot of orientation, a lot of therapy, a lot of love, a lot of support. Yes. A lot of so exactly. Because family members tend to do the worst. When they, they don't have that support from the family, they hide the child. Mm -hmm. Now you're feeling the child, you are feeling shame, you know, regret, everything. You will, you will transfer that pain and anger on that child. Yes. So I think it's, it's about support, it's about an environment that loves the parents, loves their children, accepts the children, mm -hmm. and the parent is able to, you know, walk their way through it as they love their child too, and they're able to motivate their child to mm -hmm. be better. Okay, and um, what lifestyle or mannerism would the parent of a child with special need cultivate? Oh, <laughs> when they have a child with special need, the first thing you need to understand is, especially for autism, is routine. Schedules their routine. Okay. These children already have a lot of madness going on in the world. They, yeah. they can't understand why a lot of things are the way they are. So you need to create balance and routine for them. So they know that in the morning, I wake up, I brush, I do this, do that, do that at a particular time, order, yes. so that they are able to follow that pattern. It will create a safe space for them. Because if you're scattered, the child is already, the, the head is already filled with a lot of things, then he doesn't even know the next thing that will happen. Yes. So it's a lot of anxiety. Yes. I think it's just about um, keeping a schedule, make sure you maintain that schedule as much as you can and if you have to break it because trust me it's not easy you yes. can't always keep a schedule but course. if you have to break it please explain to the child even if the child acts like they don't understand what you're saying explain to the child why this thing needs to be done in a different way today so you're like oh today we're supposed to go to church but we need to go to the market because you need to explain to the child why that thing needs to be done Okay, and the last question here is, what can a third party do to help a child with special Okay, someone of you used to say, the world is already filled with so much hate. I think, um, what do you call the next person of love? So, if you can't love the person, leave the person alone. Please don't stigmatize these children. Please don't, don't um, talk down on these children. So, if you can't accept the person, please, there's something wrong with you. Yes, yes. It's not about the child, it's you. There's something wrong with you. So, acceptance and don't stigmatize and support. Support. You see, it's a community. Yeah. Because you see a child that is non verbal, for example, that means the child can't talk, and the person is really roaming on the street. You know, maybe you know this person's parent from somewhere, or you know the person. If you if you create a support system, you can help. You can help the child. You can help the parent. Support and love and don't stigmatize. Accept those children because the truth is that everybody is wired differently. Yes. So for you, you might think you're normal, but you might not even be normal. Exactly. So that child might be the normal person. Yeah. So please, you should just learn to love and respect and don't stigmatize those children because. They're already dealing with a lot. Yeah. Trust me, their, their parents, they're already dealing with a whole lot. So, um, in a little way, just support and love and accept. Yeah. And just to mm -hmm. add, like, most of these things are not hereditary, right? Um, no. No. So it can happen to anyone? Yes. It, there's no, there's no claim, there's no scientific claim to hereditary. In, um, in most of these learning disorders, yeah. there is no scientific claim. So some people still say environment, some people still say, oh, um, sometimes the, um, 
the gym yeah. sometimes it is still it's still so you never know yes. and this gym thing you never know where your great 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 grandfather was coming from exactly <laughs> so um yeah so when you go and discriminate against someone and few years later you get married you have your own kids then what so so, so you see yeah so even if it's hereditary and there's a gene and whatever you never know where yours is coming from so yes. just you know just yeah, so so much fun. I like I've learned. I feel like the video was more for me so, <laughs> now for you guys. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Please share it with anyone, with everyone. Everyone needs to see this video because I learned a lot. And thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. By the way, thank you so much for coming. Okay, see you guys in my next video. Bye.